back, part two, tutorial 20. First thing we're going to need, and now we're actually getting moving on doing this stuff, is to clone our CentOS 6.6 .6 image again. Um, I mentioned in the last tutorial 19 that I often create templates of um, operating systems that I want to actually use. So we're going to use CentOS again. Um, here's my template, so we're going to clone this and call it we're going to need three machines so i'm going to call it first um um let's call it ip let's call it ip oh gee my word ip tables minus server yeah reinitialize the mac address and go for that one full clone so that will take a couple of minutes um then we're going to clone two client machines. Um, I could use the Chef workstation we were using the last time, but I'm going to create two clean client machines and have those available as well. So this is going to take a couple of minutes. That's exactly what I'm going to do twice more uh, for uh, IP tables client one and IP tables client two. So I'll create those. Join me in a second when they're all created and we'll set about actually configuring the network for those machines. Here are our three machines. You should now have this as well in your virtual box and call them whatever you want, but I've got IP table server, client one and client two. I've done nothing else to these machines. See, they've still got the default bridge adapter. Um, so what we want to do is create a private network. They've all got a bridge adapter for adapter one. We now want to add a second adapter, which is done by clicking on network. Now, one of the things I want to point out is I've already created, and if you watched part two of tutorial 19, um, I created a private network already, uh, which is a host-only adapter, VBoxNet 3. Now, how do you get that? Just very quickly to cover that, you go up to uh, VirtualBox Preferences, and in here you can add a host-only network by clicking on this, and it will come up with VBoxNet 4, and then you double click and you can give it whatever address range you want to have in there. Now I've already got one, so I can get rid of that and remove it. So we've got VBoxNet 3, it's on the 10.0.2.1 network, and it's available for use. So to add that, click on network, adapter to enable, host only, VBoxNet 3 and para virtualized and then allow VMs. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same on this one. Adapter 2, enable, host only, VBoxNet 3 in the advanced para and allow VMs. Okay. And the same again, adapter two, whoops, I better choose host only, para, allow VMs, done. Okay, so we now have our three machines, each of which has two network adapters. One emulating our public network on software and one emulating a private network. Oh, look, it's on VBoxNet 0. Go on that. We want VBoxNet 3. Glad I noticed that. They should all be on VBoxNet 3. My mouse is very sensitive, so it can. That's on VBoxNet 3. Perfect. Just double check all of these. VBoxNet 3. VBoxNet 3 and VBoxNet 3. Lovely. So, they're all there, all para-virtualized. That's what we want. Um, let's fire one of these up. The server, and let's get the server configured. Okay, so I just thought I'd quickly show you. This is the third machine. Um, I'll quickly show you what you get when you first log in. So, um, when I say it's the third machine, I'm in client two. I've already done the, the server and client one, but I just thought I'd show you where you get to the minute you 
boot these machines and if you've watched tutorial 19 part 2 I went into this in exhaustive detail which is why I've cut it down to just showing you one of them um, you'll notice we had a spinner so the network's not working um, the network's not working basically because we've cloned a machine so it's come across thinking well where's my ETH0 it's um, it's not there um, I don't know why I am the way I am. So the machine's in a bit of a state. So what we're going to do, what you do first, is you go straight to CD, after you've SU to root, udevrules.d. Um, and the reason I've done an IF config will become clear in a second. RE0 will be on the 97 address. And RE1 will be on the E8. So if we VI 70 dash persistent, um, and in CentOS 7, this file doesn't exist, so that's another reason I've gone 6.6 .6 here. Um, and you'll see that the old, the old address, the 94 that got cloned, is there in this file. So what we want to do is we're going to take this, copy that, um, and we want to whack that into here. I guess I could just delete the line as well, but um, and this is E zero, that's fine, and then just get rid of this one, and then this our E eight is E one. Then we want to do our usual, which is uh, vi etc uh, sysconfig network whoops network minus scripts if cfg dash eth zero let's take this which is our eth zero that's the old 94 address that got cloned over just want to quickly paste this in um, get rid of that might as well get rid of that that's fine um, then we want to copy this file to slash etc slash sysconfig slash network minus scripts if cfg dash eth1 go in whoops before we go in there we want to grab this whoops grab that this is, of course, ETH1. Paste it in. This time, it's not boot P. Its IP address is 10.0.2.17 for this particular one. And its net mask is 255.0. Excellent service network restart. See what happens. We expect a failure here. Didn't get a failure. Whoops. Let's do an IF config. It's too far up the list. Okay, ETH1 and ETH2. That's fine. That's good for now. Um, it's got the right addresses and what I am doing is I'm just changing the color um, I have a I have an orange and a red for the other so red will be server orange for client one and green for client two so I'm going to close that um, we just need to set its host name which will be IP tables Client two. Do the host name. Output that slash etc slash host name. Vi slash etc slash hosts. And this is exactly what I've done on the other machines. Um, I now want to have. Um, uh, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Let's do the public ones first. So 
dot one one five will be our. In fact, I don't actually know what that's come up as yet. Um, so I'll tell you what, now I'll do it this way. I'll do the private addresses. So it's 10.0.2.15 is our IP tables server private. I'll tell you what, let's shorten this. IPT minus server minus private 10.0.2.16 IP tables I'll go back and change the other ones now as well and then bring them all up um, client client 1 PRI and 10.0.2.17 will be our IP tables client two dash private. Our, it's 117, let's VI that again. We know this is 117, 192.168.0.117. See how much work just setting up the uh, the actual names is, and this is going to be IPT um, client to public. And I'm ever so sorry, IPT dash client to pub is what we want the host name to be. And we want host name. And put slash etc slash host now. Right, let's reboot that and see what comes back. Should only take a couple of seconds to reboot. We expect to see that failure there. That's from the old tide over. Should be fairly quick at booting. That's a good sign as well. If it's quick at rebooting, it means that the UDEV and all the uh, the changing over. Yeah, it's exactly what we want, just shooting across. Hopefully these will all go green, this little red dot. If it doesn't, we've got a problem with our network. And we do have a problem with our network. No, we don't. Good. That's exactly what we wanted to see. ETH0, ETH1, green background, host names picked up, fabulous. So it's all there, so IPT, CLT2. I will change the ETC host file on the other two machines so that they all match and let's get them all on one page. So we should have them all. I've just grabbed the server again, um, just to show you. Let's log in, grab a terminal, Get to root. It's the last part of setting our machines up. So I just wanted to show you the etc host file. There it is. We've got our private addresses and our public addresses. I'm going to grab in our second machine, which is, whoops, that's our third machine, our second machine which is our client. So we just had a look at the server. So you've got IPT CLT1 on the public. And let's grab a terminal on this one. I've just rebooted them all, which is why they're all, um, uh, whoops. Okay. Um, And there's its host file, so if we can try and get the two of them up at the same time, almost. So you can see here, 15, 16, 17, server, 1, 2, server, 1, 2, uh, 168, 118, 116, 117, 
118, 116, 117. So they're identical. And we might as well, while we're at it, just grab the final one. Terminal. And there we have it again as well. So they're all identical, 15, 16, 17. Server private, client one private, client two private, etc. So what do we want to test now? Well, we want to test pinging. We want to make sure we can ping um, IPT client, whoops, client one on the private, which is to the 10, 2, 16. perfect and let's go public perfect so we can ping client one let's change this to client two on the private yep responding there and client two on the public responding there on the 192 so we have them all pinging each other i could do exactly the same on here let's go to orange remember orange is our client one um, and we can do a ping IPT server. Yep. And the IPT server is on the public. We can ping IPT server private and get it on the 1002. Excellent. Uh, we can ping IPT CLT2 on the private, which will be the 10217. And we can ping IPT2 on the public which is 117, perfect. So, all the machines are pinging each other, I guess for absolute completeness. Why don't we just make sure we know it's responding. Um, IPT serve, yeah, perfect. IPT serve on the private, perfect as well. So, there we go. They're all pinging each other, we know where we stand. The work's gonna be done on this machine, so that's the end of part two. Now we move on to actually setting up our IP tables.